do you think that you would be able to, if you were coming into this industry fresh as a newbie, that you would be able to have a partner immediately and be successful? Do you, do you think that that would work? Man, I don't. You don't know. already hey, have systems and things that are already set up. If you don't have a solid system set up in the beginning, I, I think it would be difficult. When you have a proven track record of success, you know, and you've shown that what you've done in the past has been successful, then you're. N I mean, let's face it, we're all human. We, we have things we want to do, things a certain way. I'm the kind of person, if you give me a process, I'm going to try to find a way to improve that process. And so I'm always going to be looking at different ways to, to tweak things. I don't care how much you've done it before. I'm James Mathis. I'm going to do it the way I want to. But at the same time, you know, whenever I worked for companies, I used to tell people all the time, hey, you know, why do we do it this way? I'd have my coworkers, hey, that's dumb. I don't know, understand why we do it this way. I said, well, because our name isn't on the side of the building. Somebody else's is, you know. It's the yeah. same thing in this scenario. I've come in, I've proven what, that this process works. You can give that process to somebody else. If they see there's some improvements that can be made, yes, they can voice that and you can incorporate that into what you're doing. But at the same time, the basis for everything you're doing is what you started with. So if you come in with two people with no experience and then you're trying to figure this process out, I can see a lot of stress happening with that because you have two people that are trying that could possibly try to go two different directions on the same subject and neither one of you knows which one's successful yet so i think probably so but at the same time i'm sure there's couples out there that could do it i just don't see it in my scenario my situation that would have worked out any sure. better so all that said kind of maybe like button all that up and and if you were going to give advice to somebody who's like hey we want to team up but we're brand new you know what would their based on your experience, right? I mean, forgetting about exceptions and other people, like what would you tell people to do if they want to team up and they're new? So I would say, look, I mean, qualified, if both of them are going to go out and be adjusters at the same time, okay, maybe both of them run their own claims for a little while, you know, and this way each one of them can have their own process and then they can feed off of each other to see which one is working, which scenario works best for the two. If not, if only one person is going to be licensed, the other one's assisting, I would say let the other person run for a while. Okay, let them let them get some things figured out. Let them get mentored. Let them, you know, trial and error like, you know, a lot of us do. Um, I think that's probably better than the, bring the spouse in. The other thing is, especially right off the bat, when everything's so unknown when you're first getting started, um, for two people to jump into something and both depend on that whenever it's it's so unstable in the, in the very beginning, probably not a wise decision to begin with to have both people in it. So you probably don't want to have that other person, if they have an income, not get rid of that income yet. Because there was times in the beginning that, man, I'm glad Don had an income. <laughs> you know, and uh, right. it was, it got, it got hairy a few times. So, uh, but I would, I would definitely say one person go after it first and bring the other person in. That's what I would do. If I did it all over again, I wouldn't change it. As an adjuster, you need to know more than just how to read an HO3 policy and how to sketch a three level house in exact mate. You also need to know how to tell hail damage from wear and tear on composition shingles. The number one resource for damage identification books, trainings, and certifications is Hague Education. Not only that, but they provide building inspection and desk adjuster trainings and certifications as well. These are the guys who make the classic Hague Damage ID books that I used for years to educate myself, my insureds, and quite a few roof sales guys on what is damage that we can pay for and everything else. Looking at you, bird poop. Get a discount on all books, tools, certifications, and other trainings with the code Adjuster TV at checkout at HagueEducation.com. You know what's boring? Insurance policies. You know what's not boring? More Adjuster TV vids right here.